Preparation is the key, so everything I need is at my fingertips, like maps and charts. It's also about doing tasks when there's low workload, to lessen the demand in high workload times. SA is a little bit natural. Some people uh, just have a, a better ability to take in, take in information and process it rapidly and keep spare capacity. Uh, but we can develop uh, situational awareness through, through training and looking at preparation is probably the, the biggest point. And I use the same philosophy when I'm in my race plane. What we're doing there is we are, we are planning out absolutely every single thing that can happen, everything we want to happen, and everything that might happen that we don't necessarily want to happen. When we get in the environment itself, my brain is very clear about what it is expecting to see. So I'm very aware on where the ground should be, uh, where the pylons should be, and they're not surprising me, and it means that I've got a lot of spare capacity to deal with anything else that pops up. You can never be too prepared before you get in the aircraft. Sometimes you might feel that you, it, it's to the point of you being anal about it. But, but I've never been too prepared for being in an aircraft because every time I've thought I've had it, everything shacked and knew, knew what was going to happen during a particular flight, something would come up out of left field that I just was not expecting. But because I had done the preparation, whether it be, a, well, you name, you name the little facet that, that we did the preparation for, um, it wasn't a big drama. Every time I've gone up for a quick flight, because uh, we always do it this way, uh, generally that's when I got myself in trouble. So how do you know when you're losing SA? Well, there are some telltale signs, like being fatigued, stressed, or becoming fixated on the one thing. You've got to learn to recognize when this is happening and refocus. Always ask yourself the question, do I have the full picture? Uh, most of the times whenever I've lost SA have been because, for a number of reasons, but generally I can always bring it down to one, one fact, uh, and that's being distracted from flying the aircraft, whether it be being boresighted on uh, looking at something on the ground, uh, getting distracted by uh, trying to decipher something on a chart um, and not paying attention um, to, my, to my instruments. It's been imprinted in my brain, if you will, about losing SA. It's always been about doing something either by horsing around or something that I didn't plan to do. At the moment's uh, decision, I went and decided to do something um, different in the aircraft than I normally do. Early in my Air Force career, I was flying F-18s, and we were in a, just a training uh, mission. We were strafing a target, so using the gun, diving at the ground, you pull the trigger, you shoot uh, about 100 rounds a second into that target, and then you stop, the, you stop the shot and you pull away from the ground. You miss the ground by two to 300 feet uh, on, a, on this particular pass. So I rolled in, I put the pipper on the target. The aircraft ranging system had a bit of an error, but instead of keeping my SA of what's important to me when I'm diving at the ground, the ground, my focus got drawn in. I was looking at all of the ranging and all of the target symbology, and I was looking at the target itself. And I had the classic uh, case of target fixation, and I lost SA on the ground. I drove all the way in, not realizing there was an issue, even though I've been in the dive a long time. I squeezed the trigger, and uh, what in fact saved my life is I only had one round remaining, so when I pulled the trigger, Rather than the gun firing for a burst, one round came up. It's just a pop. And that was enough to then go, something's wrong. I then noticed that the ground was very close to me. I initiated a maximum G recovery and I missed the ground by 14 feet. So uh, very close to killing myself, all because I lost track of what was very important at the time. And that is the ground was the most important thing to me. Trying to get an accurate score was secondary to that. I reversed those two and concentrated on the score and not the ground, and the ground nearly won. We were flying one day, uh, it was, it was uh, uh, an early morning flight, uh, night into early morning. Um, it was towards the end of a uh, relatively long line period. Uh, I relinquished controls to my co-pilot, and uh, the next minute I realized I uh, was waking up from a bit of a nano nap, better than anything, because we were bored. Um, the worst part was that when I woke up for, for no apparent reason, the guy who was supposed to be flying the aircraft, he was asleep as well. 
in Warsaw, my air crewman was asleep as well, and I didn't know how long everybody had been asleep. Fortunately, it had just been a matter of seconds or minutes. Um, but again, that scared us all and quickly uh, made a uh, beeline back to the ship. And uh, the ship was, of course, asking why we're home early. But uh, we've had enough today and we're going to go home and land. But uh, it was just one of those times when it was, you know, the standard milk run, um, just normal ops that we'd done for months at a time. And, uh, yeah, we just got ourselves in a situation where... Uh, yeah, for the moment we were lost SA because we didn't know where the heck we were when we all three of us, you know, woke up and figured out where we were. And it took a couple of minutes to to determine where the ship was and uh, start working our way back home. And uh, that certainly woke us up to again the idea of uh, perhaps uh, taking things a little bit too uh, complacently and uh, not not having the the appropriate stress or seriousness about the flight. Where again we lost SA. It was a flight from Bankstown in an old Cherokee 180, which was a brand new aeroplane in those days. This is back in the 60s. The weather wasn't very good, and I spoke to a few people who said, you might get through if instead of going due west against the higher terrain, head southwest over the Wallandilly River catchment, lower terrain, and fly a, a circle around the back of the lower terrain and then fly north and you'll get the Bathurst. Maybe. So I departed, and I have to say that approaching the Wallandilly catchment, which is only 10 minutes flying from Bankstown, I was becoming concerned that the cloud was quite low. I ignored that concern and I persisted, and before I knew it, I was in cloud. The aeroplane, though, was a, was a, a new aeroplane and had a basic instrument panel. So I thought, I'll climb up through this because I do recall that even though I went in the cloud, it was thin because it was very bright. I think I probably got out of it at about 8,000 feet on top of this cloud and I thought, hmm, um, we're not going to Bathurst. We've got to go home. And I thought, well... Don't panic, take your time, um, think this through and decide what you're going to do. I considered, all right, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to fly back to Bankstown. I'm going to fly reciprocal heading and headings and, and, and times and all the rest of it, and I thought I had it pretty well worked out. Just before I turned, I, I saw a hole in the cloud, and I looked down and I identified the reservoir which is near Cowra and I thought my god it's been a long time since you actually went into cloud you're near Cowra so I'd lost all track of time in, in preparing myself anyway I turned around flew back on time I thought it's time to descend and I'll be clear of the high terrain of the Blue Mountains and the, the catchment area I descended and I broke out of the cloud at about 500 feet above the mountains and I squeezed through between the cloud and the terrain which fortunately was lowering now about where the oaks is on the Sydney terminal chart and got back to Bankstown. The passengers thought it was great. They had no idea that I'd nearly killed them. And they didn't care about missing the air show, they just thought this was fantastic. But more was to come. When I refuelled the aeroplane, I had less than 20 minutes of fuel left. And I thought to myself, when I reflected on this thing, and I still reflect on it, I thought to myself, why did you get to Cara so quickly? And the answer was quite obvious. I had a pretty strong sou uh, sou-easterly tailwind. And a good ground speed. 